Hello and welcome to Deccan Dialogues. In this episode, we bring to you a conversation between two experts, Parkala Prabhakar and M. V. Krishna Rao. Parkala Prabhakar is a trained economist and a public intellectual. M. V. Krishna Rao is former Director General of Police. Today's conversation focuses on the dire need for reforms in the police and in law and order in order for the police force to be more effective. What should be the overall system of maintaining law and order through police and judiciary? What should be the method of recruitment and training and many other such issues? Over to our experts, Parkala Prabhakar and M.V. Krishna Rao. Krishna Rao Garum, police is the institution which is, you know, face to face with the people. In fact, I do remember in uh, his famous play, Kanya Shulkam, there is a character in Gurjara Parao's play. You know, uh, this is uh, somewhere uh, in the uh, early 19th century, uh, early 20th, 20th century, uh, where there's a procession uh, by, you know, freedom fighters. And a man looks at the uh, procession and says, what is this? This is, we are, we are fighting for freedom. Oh. If you get freedom, will this constable be transferred? You see, for a common man, the face of the government is police. But police is seen, the police station is seen, the police officers are seen, especially at the ground level, as unfriendly, oppressive, not just, um, corrupt. This is the impression that we have. You are all at the apex level. You know, you are you you are uh, an IPS officer, former IPS officer. You come across as uh, you know very knowledgeable, very empathetic, and uh, um, understand the problems, etc. But who represents you in the thana is the issue. Has the police? infrastructure, police establishment and the government. Have you thought about how to change this perception? Perception, of course, uh, is something that is being looked into every day. But eventually the public judges you by the actual performance. When a victim of a crime or an ordinary citizen approaches the police station or the police authorities, he expects his grievance to be heard with patience, looked into and redressed. Very often, the disappointment for him comes in the final outcome, especially if on the other side his adversary happens to be politically somewhat connected. I am not suggesting that every issue that is taken to the police station is indeed political, it has political overtones or connections. However, over the last 75 years, what happened was that the power to control police was merely replaced by the elected government ruling party, which consists of people who firmly believe that the winner takes all. Once you have come to occupy the chair of the ruling party, the chief minister and his cabinet and uh, every MLA, etc., they say that our writ should run. The law should be so interpreted that our interests are protected. So, where there is an intervention by an MLA or a politically powerful person, justice is done within two minutes, no problem at all. But where it is a common man, very low priority is given. And if he is pitted against a politically strong opponent, then justice is simply denied to him. This is probably because our society does not believe in the rule of law and equality before law. They genuinely believe that when they are in the ruling party, they have to be perceived as masters 
and the police department should convert itself it's supposed to be a bunch of public servants but convert itself into the domestic servants of the ruling party so that's a very strong statement uh, you know, when, when i when i look at the police station uh, first thing that comes to my mind is most of them are ill equipped they are not supplied properly i know instances where you know a petitioner goes to a police station and seeks justice seeks redressal and the station house officer or writer or somebody would tell this person to bring fetch stationery fetch yeah. you know they whatever small needs which means that the that the station is not provided well that's one the second thing is uh, i feel as a citizen when i look at it is that the police personnel at the you know ground level i'm not talking about the commanded services but at the ground level are not adequately trained in 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 responding to in in policing yes in policing um their skill set is pretty low including their physical fitness so these things are not looked into is is my impression correct me if i am wrong but the the question that you've raised about the political interference and the political uh, uh, bosses uh, perceiving the police department as their subordinates to, to serve their interests their political interests rather than the general uh, interests of justice and uh, uh, public cause is 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 a, is a bane i mean it it's not confined to Uh, police department every department is looked upon you know that way even including the ias including the other engineering departments education departments including teachers you know sometimes the governments and the ministers would like the schools to you know bring children in the buses to be you know uh, utilized for uh, mobilizing the public etc that, that, that's that's a huge question but let us let's let me break it down uh, into say investigation law and order traffic um and of course you know being a very friendly helpful arm of the government to the citizen on all these counts you know you had uh, a lot of uh, commissions which looked into um i'm sure those commissions you know uh, were headed by very competent people very knowledgeable people they must have made uh, um, uh, very meaningful uh, recommendations i'm wondering if there is uh, a very innate structural problem for reforming the police structure police machinery the department structure in a macro level yes but in a micro level for example the stationery thing i was in the police department for 37 years it is a fact that by and large the funds were not adequate for this kind of minor things however in the last 8 years in telangana every police station gets a lot of money and high mobility and uh, they don't have to depend on anybody at all and they have excellent police station buildings there has been considerable improvement in the infrastructure as far as the attitude is concerned uh, there is a process that i already can see especially during the last few years of uh, mr mahendra reddy as the dg of telangana they are a lot more polite they are a lot more receptive if it is a case in which a political party is interested then of course they go slow because they have to survive the present situation is every mla is some kind of a mini chief minister in his assembly constituency and he decides who should be posted to which post including the police the station house officer there are now 33 districts in telangana 33 sps and each district would have hardly 2 or 3 119 is the total number of uh, mla assembly segments in telangana so hardly 3 or 4 mlas per district 
and outer than the dominant fellow decides or together they conspire and decide we would like to have so and so as our SP and collector and downwards MRO police station and once they form a team they are very secure nobody disturbs them and they merrily carry on however where there is a predicament whether they are discharging their duties impartially without fear or favor then of course they simply say okay if we don't behave in a manner which pleases the powers that be then we will be disturbed so in this process maybe investigation as you said if it is a case which is controversial etc then they would take the side of the dominant uh, power normally the ruling party otherwise in the case of thefts and other things nobody interferes with them it's just their ability or maybe low priority we don't know but manpower wise it's not as uh, starved as it was when we joined i joined in 1974 when a police station used to have seven eight constables whereas now they have about 25 to 30 on an average telangana alone has a huge number andhra pradesh also has a huge number tamil nadu has more than a lack of police uh, constabulary uh, maybe attitudinal changes are indeed uh, still warranted otherwise uh, material wise and infrastructure wise things are much better i think we need also to redefine what policing is it is not just uh, the the colonial concept of controlling the population you know only the status quo maintenance of ah, the status quo uh, it's, not it's, disturbing it's, yeah it's it's much more than that and the challenges also you know what uh, uh, a police force when you joined faced and what it is facing today um the kind of challenges the kind of tasks have have grown manifold uh, a police constable training or inspector training um the middle level and the lower level i am not sure really if uh, you know the the police academies not the national one but the 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 state level ones and the kind of now let us look at it from even the beginning of a, a policeman's career the recruitment the constable recruitment and the promotion and uh, the postings the transfers selection now for instance if you look at uh, the recently the uttar pradesh uh, government the appointment of uh, dgp somebody who is uh, a dgp without his completing the two year mandatory term he was removed and another name was uh, put in as the you know in charge dgp and that was sent to the ups ups asked for uh, some more names pradesh. yes um which means you know in spite of some of the reforms i feel that the political establishment is unwilling to let go they the are control. asserting their right in fact after the prakash singh judgment which is way back yeah almost 20 years ago the, in spite of the supreme court directions most of the states out of 28 states i think about 20 states have made their own police acts reasserting through the legislation that the control and superintendence of the police department was entirely with the state government which is in accordance with the constitution of india the constitution of india schedule 7 list 2 the very first two items in the list to state list number 1 is public order number 2 is police all kinds of police including railway police so they said who should be the head of the police department is a prerogative of the state government who is the supreme court to say so now that there are specific laws police acts in each state the supreme court direction is no longer valid if there is a conflict between the supreme court direction and a state made law or legislation the legislation prevails similarly in the case of parliament also therefore they made sure that they will pick and choose who should be the 
head of the police force. But Krishna Raghur, I have no objection in the political executive picking up somebody. But once somebody is picked up, they should have some kind of a security of tenure. They ought to, but when but there is a change is of chief there, minister. If, if that is not there, what happens is that, you know, every time um, somebody, they feel that somebody is uh, breathing down their neck. That is very true, but it happens more in states like Punjab where there is a chief minister change and therefore a, a DGP automatically gets changed. In the case of Uttar Pradesh, the same chief minister has been there for almost six or seven years. Hmm. Why he changed his horses midstream is more of a mystery. Perhaps he was not conveniently obeying his orders. Uttar Pradesh, there is a high degree of uh, non-conformity with law as perceived by uh, various uh, lawyers and educated people. They have their own selective interpretation. The speed with which they bulldoze houses, how they bump off uh, unsocial elements and make great um, claims as to we are doing what the public expects us to do and they get voted, re-voted. So, uh, yeah. And, 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 and officers who do this kind of uh, uh, encounters, they, they are looked upon as heroes. Yeah. In fact, there are some cinemas also which, uh, which project them as great uh, people because they are, they are perceived as people who will get quick results. But then uh, that is violation of the Article 21. Article 21 says no person, not no citizen, no person can be deprived of his life or liberty except in accordance with procedure established by law. So if the police start violating law, then it is a different kind of a police. It's not what our constitution expected to uh, be given to Indians. So. But I am wondering, during the training, are the officers, lower level as well as the higher level, are they not equipped to stand up and say, this is not law, this is not the way that it should be done, this is not the proper way, uh, there is a certain laid down procedure, we need to follow it. And if the political bosses, you know, replace that person, the person who comes in, in, in that person's place also would say the same thing so that it, it makes no difference to the political bosses whether they have Krishna Rao or uh, Parakala or anybody. That is, 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 that is, that, is that not really instilled in the police force during the training program? Is something that, that really, you know... It doesn't uh, come by training. It comes by what is called the value system. What happens is the number of posts which are glamorous are limited. Like even in the IAS, if there are 300 IAS officers, the number of districts, district collectors posts are only 30. So in their entire tenure, they would be, probably be a collector for about 3 years or 4 years. After that, he's just a secretariat uh, person. Similarly, in the police also, fortunately in Telangana, there are 13 police commissioners and therefore they do have some glamour. But nevertheless, what happens is, if a particular police officer is not obliging and not willing to be partial, he is simply replaced. Replaced by, uh, by a person who is about 20 ranks your junior. And very eager to oblige. Of course, because he owes that entire, he would have never dreamt that he would become the head of the police force or that rank. He thought he would retire just like that, unsung, unhonored, unwept. But suddenly he is made to sit on the throne and says, thank you very much. I will do whatever pleases you. So, uh, this has something to do with the value system of an average Indian. Every police officer, whether it's a constable or the DGP, they are from the same society. And when his wife goes for a wedding or something like that, uh, if her husband is no longer in a pivotal post, she is uh, uh, pitied. Oh, what happened? You are now without... 50 IPS officers in Telangana state are without any post. The taxpayer's money is given to them as salary, but they are not assigned any duties. And some of them are very brilliant people, having proved themselves of all ranks, not necessarily uh, superintendents of police, even higher ranks. Why? Because they are scared. Why unnecessarily accommodate them? They are entitled to a salary and they are also given a car and uh, a place to stay, quarter, but of course all this is a taxpayer's cost, but 
no work. Now that makes them feel terribly frustrated. Why am I in this Indian police service if I have no job to do? Not even a single case is entrusted to them. So that is how they they are able to break the will of a determined police officer. So ultimately everybody will fall in line. And they make sure that the number of police officers available are far in excess of the need. You know, um, haven't haven't we thought about these uh, questions and uh, tried to bring in reforms, recommendations? Yeah, but who ultimately has to do it? It's the government, uh-huh. either the center or no. But you see, if there if there are recommendations, if there are uh, people who have uh, applied their mind to this, there will definitely be a lot of pressure from the society for because you see, the society on the whole. Is, is not very satisfied with the policing system that we have today. You know, if, if, if I get, uh, you know, some sort of a favor from the police department, I might be happy. But then uh, more often than not, I won't. I won't get that kind of, a, uh, you know, um, treatment from the police, most of the uh, common, uh, common persons. Yeah, but the, uh, let me quote the rape case mm-hmm. in which uh, the alleged rapist, were shot dead. Even the Supreme Court appointed a National Human Rights Committee also found that it is actually cold-blooded murder. For having done that cold-blooded murder, the then police commissioner of Zyberabad and several others were garlanded and hailed as heroes. So what does public want? Public wants quick justice, which is not possible under the present criminal justice system. Everything takes time. Even Supreme Court takes years to decide. And that also depends on who the CGI is. Some cases don't come up at all. So in this process, the public wants quick results. And it's not possible if you go as per law. And therefore, these uh, shortcuts, cutting corners have become uh, fashionable. But eventually, they have to pay a price. A large number of people during the Khalistan movement in Punjab the superintendents of police who, who did this kind of encounters as well as the terrorists were in the same jail. Yeah. And it so happens the terrorists outnumbered the superintendent of police and so there were one fellow who was slapped repeatedly and he committed suicide. And neither KPS Gill nor anybody else could save them. Mm-hmm. So ultimately the society has to come to grips with the huge load of uh, uh, cases in the courts. Normally in England, if an offence is committed, within a week they file the charge sheet and the case is tried and either acquitted or punished within another one week. Yeah, it's a few Here weeks. murder cases of 2010 are still undergoing trial. So, uh, the public won't get… So, the policing system and its reform is very closely related to the criminal justice system. Very much. It's just a part… And the, and the adjudication. Because ultimately, the deterrence comes from the probability of getting punished. Supposing there is somebody who sees a beautiful girl and he wants to rape. But if he is certain that he is likely to be caught and with this DNA fingerprinting and all these scientific evidence. And the CCTV cameras everywhere. And it is very easy to connect the perpetrator of the crime and the victim of the crime. So, if he feels that yes, in all probability I will be caught and these days the sentences are very long. Life or even death, if it's a, a, a child. So, if that probability is high, he will hesitate. But right now, they know that nothing happens. Every case takes long years. So, unless we we remedy and improve the whole criminal justice system, including prosecution, right now we have very co- incompetent prosecutors, and the conviction rate is very low. Very because the court job of the court is to just decide a small issue. Does, does it also reflect, I mean, I, I, I feel that it reflects on the competence of the police uh, system and the police officers um, to frame the case. Yeah, I think it's very loosely framed under wrong sections sometimes. I think they are, they are ill-trained, ill-equipped to, you know, even frame it properly. That's not the case. What happens is, if I am asked 
as to whether on the evening of 13th of January in 2002, I saw X beating Y at 6 in the evening. And to recollect, because courts give a lot of importance on the evidence given by direct witnesses, eyewitnesses. If I am able to convince the court that what I saw is indeed now reflected in my uh, statement before the court under oath, then there is a chance of conviction. But if a doubt is introduced by the defense counsel in my version, then uh, he is acquitted. So it is difficult for people to have very credible, to adduce credible and reliable evidence after two decades. If this is done in a short gap, within a few months, then perhaps we will have a higher rate of conviction. I think, <laughs> Krishna Raghur, I, I think you, you are you are not uh, you are not prepared to take uh, or, or you know uh, take the blame onto the police uh, department. There are some special cases <laughs> like Rajiv Gandhi's case. Yeah. How did they manage to get a conviction? I, I think you're you're throwing the entire thing onto the general society, no, no. the political system, a, and uh, see the system. Yeah. You can't tinker with only one department. Supposing you have a car, and it has several uh, parts. In that, only tinkering with uh, the carburetor or something like that may not be sufficient. It has to be tuned. Everything has to be tuned. Hmm. So my personal impression is, attention has to be paid to every part. First, the police, then the prosecution. Then the criminal, uh, the trial courts, and eventually examine the loads. If necessary, we have to create more courts. There is no point in avoiding courts because we have 140 crore people. So the number of trial courts. I'm not talking about Supreme Court or High Court. They don't do any trials. Trial court is where actually cases are tried. So that needs to be looked into, hmm. and uh, whatever assistance is required. If that is done, if the speedy trial is possible, then slowly things will will be coming into play or falling. How do we begin to think about some kind of a reform in uh, the personnel, the training, the recruitment, um, and on the job training, postings, transfers? Postings are political, but as far as the investigative skills, etc., if the court has the patience to record where it has been compelled to disbelieve, then certainly the, the, every judgment is read and um, remedial action is taken. It is not as though, but the poor um, courts are so overworked to write a judgment itself is so difficult for them in the trial courts and therefore they do not want to go into all these things. They simply say, there is no evidence on record beyond reasonable doubt. And therefore, they acquitted. So, that was how it is. And uh, in, a, in a trial court nowadays, if you go and see, they, if the case, call work as it is called, starts at about 10.30, till 1 o'clock, it will be calling of various cases, no, no, ex, no witnesses examined. Yeah. After lunch yeah, only, yeah. they start. They are just kept there and, uh, you know, uh, mark their presence and get out of it. So, that is not how the court craft has to be managed, hmm. then the court, the presiding officer is very fresh in his mind, he should directly settle down and examine the witnesses and record. This, this call work business should be computerized or I don't know, maybe we should have a, a junior kind of a fellow who is not a judge to listen to all these things, has so and so come, has so and so come, why should, that is a clerical work, hmm. why should that be entrusted to a judicial officer? Hmm. No, so that that need he needs some assistance. I think in 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 in, in many ways, the the entire uh, policing system, their uh, training, their recruitment, their postings, their transfers, their accountability, and the power of the political bosses over them, um, and of course the the kind of uh, challenges that they are being uh, faced today. I think that this needs a very comprehensive review. Very correct, very correct, especially the accountability. Yes. Now they are only accountable to the MLA and to the political bosses. Hmm. So as long as they are pleased and they only are interested in a small number of cases, not by, you know, supposing there are 100 cases, that particular case in which he was interested, if the outcome is to his uh, satisfaction, he feels our police are doing very well. 
Yeah. You will never see a ruling party partition, uh, politician finding fault with police. It's the opposition which, which does. Huh. And when and they the, come to the ruling party. the same party which is the, when it is an opposition, it does. Yeah. So, that means what? They don't have a common yardstick. They do not have common parameters. So, they, they just want to make use of the police so that their own power increases. Thank you. Sure.